Today I have the distinct pleasure of speaking with Peter Causey from CBLT. How are you today, Peter? I'm good, Tracy. How are you? I'm very good, and it's such a pleasure to get to interview you instead of watching you interview or talk to somebody else, and also hit the ground running here with some good news. You just recently announced the closing of your sale of the North Shore Gold property. Seems exciting. Tell us more about it. Uh, CBLT bought a portfolio of uh, four mining assets two years ago, paid roughly a million dollars for it. We just sold one of those assets for $1.5 million. So a very accretive uh, solution for the shareholders. We sold it for cash and stock. So we have working capital to fund the company and we're the single largest shareholder in that other company going forward. So it's a win for everybody. The other company is going to list. It's called Ready, Set, Gold. Kind of a funny name. And uh, they're going to list on the CSE probably within the next month. Okay, well, I have numerous questions I want to ask you about that, but I'm going to back you up for all of those. Everybody in the industry knows you, Peter. Everybody does. But for those out there that are new to this sector, looking to widen their portfolio, they may not be aware of who CBLT is and who Peter Clausey is. So could you provide the competitive advantages of CBLT and why they should get it on their radar besides all the rest of us know you? CBLT is a funny hybrid beast. We do mineral exploration, but we're also opportunistic M&A. Any property that's good enough to buy is good enough to sell if you can make a profit for the shareholders. And since 2016, that's what we've done. We've been buying properties inexpensively and then selling them to um, uh, bidders who couldn't get their hands on the properties in the first place and making significant profit for the shareholders. Out of in 2016-17, out of the cobalt era, we generated over a million dollars of revenue for the shareholders against acquisition costs of about 160000 Okay, so I know you hate it when I do this, but I'm going to do this in front of our investor intel audience, and that is, Peter, I need you to dumb this down, okay? Tell us exactly what you're doing presently so we can put you on our radar and we can be watching you and try to keep up with you. Okay, there's two things that we're doing. First, we're exploring at Big Duck Lake. The permit process is underway. Our geologist is doing what geologists do. We have a, we're going to set a budget. We're going to go into Big Duck Lake, which is in Hemlo. I want to talk more about Hemlo. Um, and that's our exploration for now. We announced that in a press release a few weeks ago. We're also, though, doing opportunistic M&A, just like we did with North Shore, like we did with our properties in Northern Ontario. If we can buy them cheaply and we can resell them at a profit, we're going to do that. And I think we're able to do that because we're not geologists first. We are business people first. We just happen to be in geology. And that gives us more of a uh, mercenary mindset. God bless capitalism. Okay, so you said you want to talk more about Hemlo. So tell us more about Hemlo as a mercenary capitalist. Hemlo has produced about 23 million ounces of gold to date. It's a camp east of Thunder Bay in northern Ontario, highly pr prolific. Uh, most people in Canada are familiar with the story of Hemlo and how it was found. But for a long time, when gold was off, Hemlo kind of drifted off everybody's radar, except Barrick has a massive property there. Little people have been picking up bits and pieces here and there. But with gold's return to the 2000 level, and you know, it's in, in Canadian dollar terms, it's at an all-time high, interest in Hemlo is spiking. You're seeing lots of M&A activity. Our North Shore property that we sold to Ready Set Gold is in Hemlo. Big Duck Lake is 25 kilometers from that in Hemlo. Uh, I was talking to somebody yesterday who has three uh, projects in Hemlo that they're getting funded. Uh, the sugar mine with Heart Gold, Hemlo area. So Hemlo is back. Gold is back. And it's not just the gold that own Hemlo. There are a lot of VMS polymetallic deposits in Hemlo, like the Winston Lake mine. Those are going to come back as well. As the infrastructure rolls out and interest turns, watch for the international attention to focus on Hemlo, and we will attract foreign capital. Okay, so dumbing it down for myself then, we're talking about gold in the right region. Is that correct? A very hot region that would undoubtedly be undervalued? Is that what we're looking at? That's what we're looking at. And not just gold, but the polymetallic deposits, uh, like, for example, the old Winston Lake mine. And then... Um, those are all in Hemlo. 
And uh, we saw a couple of weeks ago uh, an Australian company called Superior Lake, no, Superior Resources, um, entered into a deal to sell some of its assets to a new Sprott-backed company uh, whose symbol is COPS, I think. And they're going to list that as a standalone company with Hemlo assets. Well, I think, Peter, one of the things that would be very advantageous for the Investor Intel audience members as well is maybe if we just call you once a week to get an update on what's happening in the junior exploration sector because we know you are always seeming to be talking to everybody. So speaking of that, going back to CBLT, you were talking about delisting from the TSXV and going on to the CSC. What is the process for that and where are we at in that at this time? What are the advantages? The advantages are if you're if you're listed on the venture exchange and you're issuing a lot of shares, there's a fee every time you issue a share, an option, a warrant. If you're on the CSC, no such fee applies. The annual listing fees are about the same, uh, but the initial listing fee to the CSC is around $15,000. So we're trying to find the right balance because we're cheap with shareholders' money. If we're going to be growing by acquisition, we will delist and move to the CSC. If we're not going to grow by acquisition, we will probably just stay where we are. Okay, and so uh, I'm, I'm almost afraid to ask you, what should we expect next, other than I assume you guys are looking at absolutely everything right now, and you're looking to make really good deals in this present market conditions. Is that correct? I've got a stack of deals that we're looking through. Some of them are obvious garbage. Some are retreads. Some of them are really, really interesting. Um, you know, They always say find gold in the shadow of a head frame. And we're doing that. We're looking at projects that are uh, closeology, that are close to former producers. Uh, that works in gold. It doesn't necessarily work with the other metals, but it absolutely works in gold. So we are looking through deals. The stream of news that we're going to have, though, over the next while will likely be exploration at Big Duck Lake. We're very happy with that. There's a historic resource on it, pre-43101, so the usual disclaimers apply but it's uh, a high-grade pod, and we're very happy to get back in there and pound some holes in the ground. Okay, so let me just ask you something. Are you looking for deals for acquisitions? Are you looking for partnerships? Or are you looking for all of the above that makes sense for your shareholders, which is what I think I'm hearing. Is that correct? That's exactly correct. Um, I have people making offers for some of our assets. We have people um, offering us to sell assets, and we have some investors off in the site uh, offering us some flow-through capital but we don't want to close on that yet until we know exactly what we're going to do with it at Big Duck Lake. Okay, and with Big Duck, well, a Big Duck Lake, we know you have gold. We also know CBLT has often uh, been involved in cobalt. Is there any yep. other critical material or resource in general that you're focused on presently? No, we're not focused on the resources right now. Um, I'm finding it very hard to predict where each commodity is going to go, except for silver, which I'm I've been on the silver bandwagon since PDAC in early March when it was $16. Now it's around 27 after having hit a high of 30. Uh, silver's going to have a great time. Other than that, I can't predict. So all we can do is work the properties that we have, put out good results, and do time-sensitive M&A as it becomes available to us. Well, fantastic. Peter, as always, it's a pleasure to get an update from you and CBLT. Thank you. Always nice chatting with you. Have a great day. Stay safe.